You're listening to the Aesthetically Speaking Podcast, presented by Next Tech. Hey guys, welcome back to the Aesthetically Speaking Podcast. My name is Tyler Terry and I am your host. Today I have two incredibly special guests, Dr. Joel Schlesinger and Dr. Daniel Schlesinger. So happy to have both of you here and honored to have you on the podcast. Great to be here with you, Tyler. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Of course, of course. Our pleasure. And uh, you guys have been clients of ours for over a decade and uh, really one of my favorite practices. Well over a decade, actually. Okay. Well, how long has it been? Do you know? I think it's been since 2006. Wow. I believe so. Two decades. Yeah. Yeah. That's so incredible. Two decades worth of uh, work with Dextech. It's been amazing. Wow. And I know with TouchMD, it's been a, over a decade. So you've had two technologies, even prior to the acquisition, you know, Next Tech acquired TouchMD back sure. in the fall of 2022. So, And um, actually, we go before Next Tech with Chiron, which I think was kind of melded into Next Tech, which is why we ended up with Next Tech. Wow. There's some history there. Yeah. That's incredible. Um, and before now, that, we were using an abacus. Okay. <laughs> so, and, cool. and, you know, just papyrus for our notes and stuff like that. And it, that was really uncomfortable because like those scrolls, you can never really use them all that well. I'd like to give you both time to kind of just give us a little bit, uh, about, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'll start with you, Dr. Daniel. Yeah. So I am currently a Mohs surgery and cosmetic surgery fellow at Northwestern University in Chicago. And in the fall, I'm going to be joining my dad in practice. But uh, before then, uh, I grew up around dermatology. Um, I've worked with my dad my whole life on various projects. We've researched together. We've created products together. We uh, have produced, uh, invented, and patented a medicated lip balm with 1% hydrocortisone called Fix My Skin Healing Balms. Wow. And. Um, after that, I went to Northwestern for undergrad and medical school. I was at Mass General Hospital in Boston for my first year of residency, followed by WashU in St. Louis for dermatology residency, and then back at Northwestern for my fellowship. Wow, congratulations on that. And before we did that, we even did research together, but we have continued. We've done some clinical trials over the couple of years that we've uh, been uh, separated while well, Daniel was in residency in medical school, that we were kind of in, involved with each other in clinical trials and continued to do clinical research. So um, Dr. Joel, I'd love for you to share with our listeners a little bit about you and, and your past. So I'm board certified dermatologist, board certified Mohs surgeon, and previously board certified pediatrician. And I've been in practice now for about 32 years on my own and have uh, done quite a bit of work, not only with the medical dermatology, but cosmetic dermatology and clinical research. And so we have that in the practice. The practice itself is a rather large practice. We do about 20,000 patient visits a year, and we have a med spa associated with it, as well as a store associated with it. So Next Tech kind of takes all those aspects, all those disparate aspects, and ties them all together. And the store that you're referring to is one of my favorites, Lovely Skin. And uh, you were one of the first to actually have your own online skincare store. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how you're able to dream that up and see it before others even really caught that vision? Well, when I started practice in 1992, I actually joined a group for about a year, and then I started my own practice in 1993, summer of 93, and immediately started taking on skincare products because I knew that cosmeceuticals had a valid opportunity for helping people with skin, skin research uh, or skin problems that were uh, out there and things that I couldn't touch them with. In other words, I would see people come in that had this you know, panoply of products that were just garbage from, you know, this store, that store, and they'd been sold a bill of goods on so many of them. And really, I wanted them to have products that I knew would help them with their conditions. And as we know, there are cosmeceuticals that are able to help you with whether it's keratosis pilaris or dry lips, as in the case with our Fix My Skin, or dry skin that, that we have 1% hydrocortisone or other options that are out there that might be better than picking something up at a drugstore or a department store. So that was the whole goal of it. 
But when we had been doing this for about four or five years, I realized that a lot of my patients were moving out of Omaha and they needed it. And they were calling us up and saying, hey, could you send it to us because we can't find it. Our dermatologist doesn't carry it or it's not available. I moved to you know somewhere remote and I can't find that in my remote area. So we started to sell them those products via phone. And I thought, well, maybe we'll just set up a, a website for it because I had a website. This is back in 97 wow. for the for the medical practice, and it was so boring. It was just like a, a few little, you know, hours and what we did. And I thought, well, just add a shopping cart at the end of that. Yeah. And so <laughs> we did that. First purchase was in January of 99. Our first sale was in January of 99. And it was very slow. For the first five years, from 97 until 2002, we lost about $50,000 a year doing Lovely Skin. And oh it was just, it was just a, a labor of love. And I just kept on thinking, well, there may be something more to this than, than that. And maybe one day we can make it successful. And around 2002, when Google took off, Bing took off, we really became inundated with people. And we invested all of our money into search. And we were buying uh, pay-per-clicks at a penny a click, which as you know right now, can be $100, $200 a click. It was a penny a click. And we just put every single dollar into that. And that's how we built this list of 2 million names that we have of people that shop at Lovely Skin. 1.3 million that are opted in for email, 70,000 for uh, SMS texts. So it's been, become a, a fairly large business. Wow. The funny thing about the pay-per-click back in those early days is uh, I was actually in elementary school and my older sister and I would bid on these search terms after school. No way. And that was just what we did. And it was basically set up like a game for us, like get us the best deal for the best search terms for the best deal. And, and we would just come home and we'd play that for a few hours and, you know, and, and buy him customers. <laughs> and I just want to um, thank you guys for sharing that story. I mean, that's that's incredible. And the dot com era and you did it and you started it out for the care of your patients because they were, you know, moving away and you're trying to help them out. And, and it, you did it before it was cool to even start or people even talked about e-commerce. We always used to say it's for the housewife in Montana, but it, it's so much <laughs> more than that. It's just for that person who is, you know, out there and can't get access to these products. They may see something in Allure or Vogue or something else that they couldn't see, or a doctor's product like what we had where our patients moved, they couldn't find it in their local areas. So it's become quite an interesting thing to have so many people that I think of as my pen pals, but in so many ways we're taking care of them. By the way, every single piece that you see that comes to you, I've looked over personally. I look over every single marketing piece that goes out of Lovely Skin to make sure that it has a dermatological uh, bent and that it's it's ethically right and that it's it's made to my specifications. I would like to shift gears a little bit sure. and ask you guys, I would like to ask both of you what trends that you're seeing um, in the dermatology industry, both medical and aesthetic. And Dr. Daniel, I'll start with you. Yeah, well, uh, it's a great question. And I actually had an opportunity just a few hours ago to lecture on AI in dermatology, which I have a special interest in. And I, I, I think it's a, definitely something that's a big trend in dermatology. And I think it, it has a lot of potential for both good and for also some drawbacks as well. Yeah, what are, what are some things that excite you the most? Yeah, so uh, this afternoon I was speaking on large language models. Okay. Things like ChatGPT and Google's Bard, or what is now called Gemini. So these are super powered chatbots that even a few years ago were simply not possible. You can have a conversation with them and it's almost like you're speaking with a human. They might make a mistake, they might completely mess up something and, and make up information, or they might have an incredibly creative response to something that you had never considered. Um, they have a lot of potential. You can also, in addition to having text in and text out, you can give it an image and have it give you a diagnosis. You can give it text and have it give you an image to, to, to supplement it. Wow. What are some ways that you, and we're kind of dreaming here, but what are some ways over the next five to 10 years that you see this impacting the industry and even impacting potentially your research? Is, is it something that you're using actively as you're researching? It's absolutely something that's going to impact the industry. I mean, it already is um, in so many ways. Um, in, the, in the 
practice management sphere, thinking about things like Next Tech, it, it absolutely will be able to help with patient scheduling and feedback, patient education tools, uh, uh, wound care and, and management of, of post-procedural uh, complications. Um, it will also help with research, most likely. Um, in the clinical research sphere, this is something we've been talking about a lot. Um, there's a huge need for standardization of the outcome measures that we use. Okay. So if you do a clinical trial of something, you have to measure how well it works, but those measurements are imprecise. There's a lot of subjectivity involved. And the way I might uh, measure something is different than the way you might do it. And it was different from the way my father might do it. AI could potentially have a role in standardizing those outcome measurements. Couldn't agree more with you, you know, in terms of software, how it can fit in and how it can play a role to enhance the patient experience and to um, help standardize care and to help with research. And um, what excites me most is the speed, you know, the speed that we can get to places that may have taken us potentially 20, 30, 40 years. And hopefully that's, you know, getting us in that two, three, four, five year mark. So. Um, I'll turn the time over to you, Dr. Joel, um, to share, you know, what trends you're seeing and what, what excites you um, as you look towards the future. I think that the biggest things that I'm seeing right now are additions to the neurotoxins. I presented today on a new form of neurotoxin, rolibotulinum toxin, which is a Galderma product that will be a toxin that is a liquid toxin. It won't be uh, one that you have to reconstitute. It will be coming in the vial in liquid form, which I think is is nice. It takes some of the guesswork out of it. It, it makes it more reproducible. I think that's going to be good. The, the data, of course, uh, for this is very, very good. A lot of the, our toxins are becoming a little bit more long lasting, whether it's because we're concentrating them a little bit more, we're getting a little bit more per unit of the actual botulinum toxin uh, protein, but whatever the case, we're starting to see toxins that last more than three months if we handle them correctly. We're also seeing additions to the areas that we're treating with toxins. Like, you know, five, 10 years ago, it was very rare for us to do uh, off uh, label areas like DAOs or for the neck, we're starting to see a lot more of that. And that's going to be uh, codified. We're doing clinical trial right now on master uh, Botox uh, for uh, mas master hypertrophy. So there are a lot more indications, Tyler, I think, that are going to be coming out. And I think that's going to be great. We also see a lot of new lasers that are quite exciting that we're going to be including in, in patient care regimens. And we've been on the forefront of laser treatments for literally 30 years. I think I bought my first laser about 30 years ago, which was a, a CO2 laser. And we did full face CO2s and it was quite grueling. Now it's like night and day. The The reasons that we do it are, are so much uh, better, I think, than what we started off with. People are addressing their concerns much earlier. The whole idea of prejuvenation versus rejuvenation. I'm so excited to see people that are taking care of their skin and really uh, proactively looking at what they can do to keep themselves in the, in the best health that they can. When I started practice in 1992, it was absolutely impossible to find good treatments for certain conditions. And it, until really recently, there weren't adequate treatments for so many conditions that we uh, came in touch with each day, whether it be vitiligo, alopecia areata, even psoriasis, HS, hydradenitis superativa. And we have knocked out so many conditions, whether it be psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis, alopecia areata, so many that we're going to have good, if not great treatments for. And that makes me so very happy. Even something as simple as wart treatments. We're doing a clinical trial right now on a Canada antigen product. And it might be interesting to see how that goes over time if we have a good treatment for warts. There are other treatments for warts that are coming out from other companies, for molluscum. So there are a lot of things that we just are bit by bit taking out pro problems that we couldn't cure or we had very limited options for. And it's, it's exciting to be a dermatologist circa 2024. 
what would you say has been, you know, one of the most rewarding things about being a board certified dermatologist? It's always got to be the relationships that we have with the patients. And I think that uh, probably the the most rewarding thing is that I have Daniel over <laughs> here who has followed my work since he was born and is now joining me. And I have a the ab ability to pass on this love of dermatology, this love of what I do to the next generation. Um, and I think it's going to be a great, a great opportunity for you know, us to continue the care of those patients because as you take care of those patients, you want to make sure that they're in great hands Amazing after, hands. you know, you're gone. So I think it's not that I'm planning on it, but, you know, I want to make sure that there is continuity. So I'm very excited about that. Dr. Daniel, I would love for you to tell us how you were driven to become a dermatologist and what led you to walk in your father's footsteps? Well, I mean, speaking about that love, I, I literally grew up around this and, you know, our dinner table discussions were talking about some rash that, that from, from clinic that day. And uh, growing up around that and seeing my dad's love for, for this profession, it's hard not to fall in love with something when, when someone that you admire does too. Yeah. And for almost as long as I can remember, I was, I've been interested in science, medicine, and, and dermatology. Um, it, it was a natural choice. I, I explored many different fields of medicine, and I was the kind of person in medical school who truly loved almost every rotation I was on. But in the end, nothing came close to dermatology. And, and I, I just feel so lucky to have ended up in this field to have the opportunity to work with my dad, to learn from him, to, to work together and um, just have this special moment together. Yeah, it doesn't get any more special than, you know, having that type of relationship with your parent. You have an incredible family and um, I can tell Dr. Joel that you are passing the baton on to someone who will take it to the next level and who will make you proud. Already has, already has. <laughs> yeah. And you know, you've met my wife, Nancy, who's amazing. And Incredible. she's made such an impact in the practice and in our lives and uh, the medical site as, that we, as we function and the website. And Nancy has a, an integral role. And even my parents, uh, June and Bernie, uh, have made a huge uh, impact in, in our business. And Daniel's married now, uh, his wife, Steffi, is helping out as well in so many ways with some of the things that we do. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Yeah, and thank you so much. So um, I would love to have you both on again and maybe to you know go over other topics. Um, what you shared with us today is so incredibly valuable and super exciting and is making me want to ask even more questions. <laughs> but um, I just want to thank you both for your time and uh, would love to invite you back on in the future. Absolutely. Let me say one thing yes. before we do go, and that is just talking about Next Tech. You know, I know that that's kind of one of the reasons that we're here, and I want to say how impactful Next Tech has been on our practice. So we started Next Tech back in 2006, just for the uh, the the part for billing part and practice management. Now we added in the EMR part back in I think it was about 2012, and it was done kind of kicking and screaming because we didn't know what we were in for, how it would change things, whether we could adapt to it. And best thing that we ever did was going to the EMR. You know, we took about 100,000 charts and gone. They were out of there. That allowed us to reclaim incredibly valuable space in our practice so that we had the ability to expand our nurses' uh, stations, that they could have a place to, to go that was enlarged because there were so many new things that the nurses were doing. They had gone from just having paper, of course, to work with, to having to have a computer station to work with to, to document things. And so that transition allowed them the, the opportunity to go from paper to computer and we have evolved with the EMR so remarkably over time that, especially during the pandemic, I have to say that the Next Tech people were absolutely incomparable. When we were down and out and we didn't have the ability to see patients other than through telemedicine, Next Tech 
came out within one week with the telemedicine option wow. that we were able to see people. Literally, we would have not had any income into the practice. And it was a scary, scary thing. Yeah. But Next Tech took care of us within one week. It was absolutely nothing short of miraculous that they were able to set that up. And that allowed us to keep every nurse employed, every employee employed during that time period. So I'll never forget that. And then the other thing that they did was allowing it to be on an iPhone. So okay. the opportunity for me, like last night, I got a call four in the morning from a patient that had a procedure uh, done by one of my associates and there was a question about it. And I was able to look it up on my phone and say, oh no, that was something, you know, here's what you do for that. And here I am in San Diego, 2000 miles away from, from our home. And I was able to help that patient out within a, about one minute by just looking her up on the next tech system, find out exactly what had been done for her, what her allergies were and how to handle it. So, you know, kudos to you guys. You make our lives as dermatologists so much better. Wow, thank you for saying that. I know it means the world to our entire company, everybody that is listening to this. And uh, just know that, you know, we really value our clients and our goal is to really treat you like family. I'm going back to that family centerpiece and being the heart and soul. And um, thanks for sharing that, that incredible story of our company being able to, you know, innovate, shift and uh, develop something within a matter of a week when everything shut down, which obviously made a huge impact on your family, on the family of your practice. So thank you for that. Dr. Thank Joel. you. And thanks, Next Tech. Yes, thank you, Next Tech. Thank you, Next Tech. <laughs> thank you both. Appreciate your time. Thanks for listening to Aesthetically Speaking, the podcast where beauty meets business, presented by Next Tech. Follow and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you like to listen to podcasts. Links to the resources mentioned on this podcast are available in your show notes. For more information about Next Tech, visit nexttech.com or to learn more about TouchMD, go to touchmd.com. Aesthetically Speaking is a production of The Axis, T-H-E-A-X-I-S dot I-O.